Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Steam Forward podcast. As always, I'm your host, Savannah, and today our guest is Chef Grace Lowe. A little bit about Chef Grace is she is a Johnson & Wells alumni. She got her degree in culinary arts, but my favorite part about her is that she is our chef, our instructor for Foodie Fridays, and she teaches the kids how to cook and how to appreciate other cultures. Please help me welcome Chef Grace. Hello, Miss Grace. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Hi, Savannah. You doing okay? I'm doing good. How are you doing post um, summer camp? Are we good on the Fridays now? Uh, we are good on the Friday, but then I start missing the kids. Yeah, same, same. So, Chef Grace, give us some background into your life. Where were you born? Where were you raised? How did you grow up? Um, I was born in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born in Malaysia in a Malaysian Chinese family. So you speak Chinese? Yes, I speak Chinese at home. And I actually, uh, I went to school. I went to a Chinese school. Mm-hmm. And how long did you live in Malaysia? I was, um, I was in Malaysia until I was 16 years old. Oh, wow. Then our whole family decided to move to United States. Mm-hmm. So in Malaysia, is it predominantly Chinese in the area that you grew up in? Or were you kind of like the only Chinese people? Uh, No, actually Malaysia made made out of three different main. The the main culture Mm -hmm. uh, groups are Chinese, Malay, and uh, Hindu. And Hindu. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. So when you moved to America, where did you move to? Um, our whole family would move to San Francisco. Oh, California. Okay. Yes, actually, on my father's family, they all um, they live in San Francisco already. And we moved there. Right. Yes. That's nice. So, do you prefer California? Are you more of a West Coaster or East Coaster? Actually, I would say East Coaster now because I've been more or less between school. I started to uh, go to school. At um, at Johnson Wales University mm-hmm. since 1996. Wow! So you've been here since 1996 in Miami. Um, not permanently because I actually moved around right. the country mm-hmm. and I worked in different states mm-hmm. before before I settled back in uh, Miami. So when did what moment would you say was the moment that pushed you into like your love for food and culinary art? What moment? Wow. That has to go back to a long time ago. So when I was 12 years old, Mm -hmm. there was one day I have to write an essay. We have to write an essay in class, right? English Mm -hmm. class. Yeah. So that essay was actually in a Chinese class. Mm -hmm. Like, what will you do when you grow up? Uh, What what kind of career would you like to have? So it actually took me for a while that I have to write that. Yeah. And then it's a hard question. Yeah, I decided I was like, wow, at 12 years old. Then I was like, okay, all right, I want to be a chef. (laughs) Right. So from then on, that thought is always, it's always been with me. Mm -hmm. And then the thought came out when, came up again when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I grew up in a Chinese family. So, my parents would not, not my parents, my parents are actually very supportive. Right. My mom, but my mom always tell me, you don't want to be a chef. You don't want to work in the kitchens because it's so much hard work. Right. You have to stand from nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, and then you have to work until 10 at night with the restaurant clothes. Yeah. So it's like, that's a lot of labor. I mean, you're going to school, you want to be a professional. Right. Like a lawyer, a doctor. A lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. Yeah. There's always three choices. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so growing up, my thought changed a little bit. I was like, I want to, I guess I would just be a nurse. Mm-hmm. But then um, I was in high school, but the thought keep coming back to me that I think I want to be a chef. I want to work in the kitchen. I love and one of also besides loving to cook, yeah. one of the main reasons I I love hospitality. Oh yes, hospitality oh, yes. industry. 
So that was like the main motivation too. Why do you enjoy the hospitality? Um, I love hotels. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I love staying in hotels. Yeah. I um, I guess maybe because my dad used to be a, ma- a general manager mm-hmm. in a boutique hotel in in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So when I was growing up, I went to his hotel a lot. Yeah. So I enjoyed the hospitality culture. Yeah. About mm-hmm. kind of like the energy, maybe. the energy, how friendly everybody oh, yeah. is. Yeah. The ambience it make you always feel welcome. So it actually very impressed me when, when you when the big door is open, yeah, everybody, not bowing, but they will say, "Welcome, yeah. welcome to such and such hotel." Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh-huh. How are you doing today? Uh-huh. It's like that readings, that atmosphere. That's what I enjoy. And do you feel like cooking food and culinary arts kind of brings that ambiance and that feeling as well? Yes, it adds to it. Yeah, absolutely. It adds to the whole experience. So what was your first major job in the kitchen? Um, Actually, before I graduated or before when I was in college, Uh I was in Malaysia. I went during summer time. I actually went back to Malaysia and I intern my shop myself mm-hmm. uh, at a hotel called Ming Court Hotel. Mm-hmm. And I work as commerce tree. Commerce tree is like a cook tree. So it's the lowest entry. Mm-hmm. And I work in like a... It's like a line cook, like on the line. Yeah, I was the lowest rank, ranking uh, line cook in... A, I would say a, they call it like a, a cafe. Mm-hmm a cafe in a coffee house in Minkot Hotel. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I make milkshakes. <laughs> I make salads. Yeah. I do whatever everybody tell me to do. Mm-hmm. That's how I kind of got your grounds on yes. in the culinary arts world. Yes. So when you went to Johnson & Wells, which I also went there, um, I remember I used to get invited to go eat the food that everybody cooks in culinary arts. That was my favorite thing ever. Mm-hmm. To get invited to. So what was um, one of your favorite things that you learned in culinary art school? The favorite thing? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I can't really tell you my favorite thing because when I was in culinary school, I felt that I was a sponge. And you just enjoyed everything. I was a sponge. I mm-hmm. just absorbed everything they threw to me. I'm willing to learn. I'm exciting. Everything is new to me. Yeah. And um, also one thing, I serve a lot. Yeah. I volunteer a lot because that's where I get all my different mm-hmm. experience. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So let's dive into Foodie Fridays. So Chef Grace, if there's a viewer watching and they're like, you guys keep talking about Foodie Friday. What is Foodie Friday? So Foodie Friday is happens, first of all every Friday, right? And it involves food. So what it is, is we bring in a group of uh, mm-hmm. students. Usually a group is 10 of them. Yeah. It could be six to eight. And then what we do is that we introduce them to different cuisines, mm-hmm. uh, different producers, different ingredients, and we teach them how to cook mm-hmm. um, different kind of food. Right. So a lot of time we could have a theme on that day. Mm-hmm. We could, we could be like a southern food, mm-hmm. or we could be a vegan day, um, a day that involves Japanese food, or we could even do American regional food, like southern food, the yeah. food in in the western part of the country, yeah, west region. So anything, right? But the main point of the class is to ex to let the students experience different kind of foods. Right. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I know that it's also for when your child is in a different place or setting or they're around food that they aren't normally used to, that you kind of develop like techniques and manners as to, oh, I don't like that too much. I do enjoy this. Or just to be 
I feel like with Gen 2050 and the idea of STEAM, right, I think you can agree with me, is that it really just opens kids who aren't exposed to these kind of things yes. to different foods. Like when we did the ve- the vegetarian one, they're like cauliflower. <laughs> Some kids have never had cauliflower in their life. And I was like, wow, you know? Yeah. Do you know, do you know how uh, Gen 50, Gen 2050 got started? Tell me. Um, so one of the main reason, uh, even before, even before, like we want to expose to the, expose to kids to different kind of foods or mm-hmm. uh, foods that they are not used to, we are actually one of the main reasons for it is we want to encourage these students to eat different kind of vegetables. Right, which is so what is yeah. So it's right. like a health reason, right, and sustainable foods as well. Yes. Things that are good to use for the environment. So, Miss Grace, um, take us through how you kind of get a menu or how you, because I know, so we did Mediterranean, we did like Southern style, like Juneteenth, we did vegetarian, we did Japanese. Um, are there books that you use? How is your process when deciding what country? Gen 2050, uh, Foodie Friday Club. Mm-hmm. This, this was actually our seven years. Yeah. So it's our seventh Foodie Friday. Yeah. So we came a long way. We actually, <laughs> so we start, we start from uh, researching. Mm-hmm. We start from, uh, we don't have a cookbook. And then we start from scratch, mm-hmm. researching like online recipes. Also food that from my experience, that right. there was like this recipe that I love to yeah. use or I used to use. Mm-hmm. A recipe from different cookbooks. Mm-hmm. That's how it started. And then we, we actually have a collections yeah. of recipe. We have modules, like yeah. how we want the class to flow. Right. And usually like before, before the uh, school started, we actually sit down and talk about what's mm-hmm. this year going to be. Right. We so like how we did it. this C and then the year before was African inspired. Yes. Yeah. And like the year before we have the Jubilee cookbook. Mm-hmm. And then it comes, it's also, we have pie in the heart that mm-hmm. corresponded mm-hmm. all together with the, with the show in next week. Right. So, so every single year, yeah, you just kind of build off the theme. Mm-hmm. And so, um, can you tell with the viewers, um, what they did with, cause we did the sea and the water, what the students did that different this year with fish than they normally do. Oh, <laughs> this year is very fun. We actually get to, our, stu- our students actually get to go to this organic farm where they raise their own um, tilapia. Is it tilapia or African perch? So it's a kind of tilapia, yeah. African perch. And every Thursday, they get different group of students get to go to the farm uh-huh. and they get to fish. That was fun. I went before with them and yeah. um, somehow that day, they only catch like little tiny fish. Right. So when they catch the little tiny fish, mm-hmm. we uh, they say, please don't bring them back. Yeah. We cannot do anything. So they actually throw the fishing net to net some uh, bigger size fish. Mm-hmm. And when they come back, we teach them how to clean the fish. Mm-hmm. First, we have to teach them how to kill the fish, clean the fish scale the fish yeah and we actually fillet them and we make it into uh we put it in the menu with our foodie friday food it was definitely delicious if i can say for myself and i think that if i was in middle school i don't think i've ever went caught a fish skinned a fish gutted a fish and then prepared it we are very lucky we actually have a lot of kids Mm -hmm. that they did a really good job. Yeah. They are like a pro. I believe it. They probably do it at home or whatever the case may be. So Chef Grace, in about you have about over t- close to 25 years of experience in culinary arts. And so if you could express to people, um, what message are you trying to send when you're preparing food and you're serving people? What is it that you would want somebody to feel in that moment? enjoy just enjoy enjoy yourself yeah enjoy every single moment because you know how cooking can be so therapeutic yes, i agree and when you're enjoying 
really, really good food. Yeah. So when the food is really, really delicious, that's, the food is talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is that, all good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chef Grace, we thank you so much for all of your experience coming on the podcast. And we like to end with a word of the day. So if you could wrap up um, kind of you being our Foodie Friday chef and your culinary arts experience into one word, what would that word be? Inspire. And why is that? It inspire me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think about my experience with uh, Foodie Friday with the students, watching them learn actually inspire me. Love that. Yeah, I agree. It's nothing more rewarding than sharing your passions with somebody and they get just as passionate. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited for what uh, next summer has or even throughout the year because sometimes we do some random Foodie Friday things. So thank you, Chef Grace, for all of your knowledge and your experience. And um, thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. And as of all, you're welcome. And as always, there are two sponsors that we like um, to thank here at the Steam Forward Podcast, and that's Trinity Church and the Children's Trust. And don't forget, there are three ways in which you can watch or listen to this podcast. If you like to listen, just follow us on Apple, Spotify. But if you'd like to watch, just follow us on YouTube. And remember, this is the Steam Forward Podcast. See you next week. Steam Forward Podcast.